as a way of change, I'm going to do some woodwork into here. Or as the wife calls it, making big bits of wood into smaller bits of wood. Which isn't far from the truth, truth be told. But um, in this instance, I'm going to make something slightly more constructive. Um, I bought a set of uh, Forstner drill bits um, a couple of weeks ago and they didn't come in a box. Um, and I don't really like my drill bits clattering about and bouncing off each other, so I'm going to make a box for them. I'm not, don't profess to be an expert at this. Um, I'll tinker a bit with a bit of woodwork and do a little bit of woodworking for the boat, that kind of thing. There are plenty of woodworking videos out there on YouTube um, from far more proficient woodworkers than myself, um, such as just to name a couple Norm Abram with New Yankee Workshop and Paul Sellers, two of the people who are a massive inspiration to me. And, you know, just to get, you know, give me the kind of the confidence to come out here into my shed and make wooden abominations, as I've called them in the past. It's probably not nothing groundbreaking that anyone's going to see from me doing this, but you never know. Look, I'm not brilliant at this, and if this gives anyone just a kick in the backside to actually pick up a saw, pick up a plane, whatever, and actually try the hand at woodworking, good. That's kind of the point of it. I enjoy it, it's very therapeutic. First, I need to mark off the end, the thickness of the wood. So, what I'll do is I'll butt this piece up against there, draw a pencil line, and reverse it, and then do the same with this, this piece. Just get it right up to the edge there. First of all, I'm going to measure where I'm going to put the dovetail. Five mil in, I'm going to mark eleven mil from that, another mark from the other side, five mil in, mark eleven mil from that, another mark. So I've got these four points. And that's going to be where the dovetails go. Now that I've got that, I need to mark the lines across the top. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the pieces that are going to be cut off. Believe it or not, I have accidentally cut off the wrong pieces in the past. So, I start the cut. Always steer on the waist side, the waist side being the bit that's going to get cut off. Steer on that side. I can trim down to the dovetail, but obviously I can't add wood once I've removed it. Stop just shy of the line. Now we need to remove this piece in the middle. So what I'm going to do with that. Just make sure that this uh, Knife wall is quite deep. It's good enough on the other side already. Put the chisel in this knife wall that I created earlier. Just give it a tap. Which just deepens the knife wall just a tiny little bit. Once I've deepened it, what I'm going to do is come in from here and just rock it in, get my hands out of the way.
like so. Now that I've made it a little bit deeper, get my chisel back in on that knife wall. And give it a bit harder thwack. Again. Just work it in there. Do the same on the other side. So, now that that's done, there's a little bit cleaned up to do inside of here. Just trimming this up now, tidying it up. Cutting it a little bit closer to the um, lines. It's not really crucial at this stage. get everything exact that's at the next stage when you're cutting the um, the pins because right now if I get the dovetails slightly off it doesn't really matter because I've got to measure the pins to fit the dovetails so the only thing that's really important at this stage is to get the get everything square by which I mean the angles here, across there, square, around here, square. And once that's done, once it's somewhere near, I can start worrying about cutting the pins. That's square, that's square, all the way across. And that one is square. Just line straight. Could do a little bit more of each of that shoulder. Yeah, just a little bit on each side. Mark the waist pieces because these are the pins, it's the middle bits that's coming out. What I tend to do is you just cut about a millimetre inside on the waist side. So, what I do is I just kind of I'm using my, my uh, fingernail just to kind of guide it, get it started. Said earlier, this is the crucial point. If I over trim the pins, the joint will be loose. So, and I don't want to do the fill the gaps with sawdust as some people do. I prefer it just to fit in the first place. So, I'm keeping well clear of the lines, I'm just squaring it up. So now I can already tell from this that this isn't going to fit. Oop, it's the wrong way around. Right. No, it's too tight. The first one is a little bit heavy on this side. No, actually, um, no, the first one I think will go. It's the second one that's a problem. That's this side here. That's it. Yep, that's in. flat um, I'm going across the grain because the grain direction with the being like a kind of swirl in the middle here 
it's a, it's a pain in the backside to try and work like lengthwise so I'm just going to cross it. I'm going to start gluing this together. It's still a bit cold out there but I'm getting a bit impatient so just smearing the glue all over the insides of the uh, joints. and then uh, clamp it up. The glue should have dried by now. Yep. Check that the box is square, which it is. Absolutely perfectly. Yep, couldn't be better if I tried. So now I just need to tidy up these uh, these rough edges. I'll get the chisel onto them and then run the plane over. Just using the chisel to take off a little bit of excess. And that's all of the joints. Nice and flush. There's a little bit of gap in there. I know people say you shouldn't point out your own faults, but there is a fault. But I'm not hugely worried about that. I'm going to plane this side and then I'll work my way into this side while using this side as a reference. You see what I mean? Once I get started. Now run a couple of shavings off. Now, while resting the sole of the plane on this side, I'll run it around the corner. And then again. One thing I've noticed, this glue it seems to be leaving like a black line. It seems to be turning black when it's going off. I don't know what's going on there. I wonder if it had something to do with the, it being cold. <clears throat> now I need to decide where I'm going to split the box. Um, I'm thinking. is about two inches deep so 50 mil in the, in the new scale so I think I'll cut about 20 mil oh, about 15 mil down 15 mil down the side of the wall anyway so I'll mark that up the box and the vice. I've got it where I want it and then about one and a half inches in. Yeah I'll put, put the hinges about one and a half inches in from either side. I'm just gonna put a little mark and pencil. I can't 
not really put a pilot hole in here because even the smallest drill bit I've got, which is two millimeters, is um, quite a bit thicker than this screw. So use the pin that's in the back of the multi, uh, the multi square just to create a little starting hole. clasps on the same distance from the edge one and a half inches in I'm not going to oil the inside of the box. I'm going to use clear lacquer on the inside, if anything at all. But the outside, I do like the look. That the inner shoulder gets wood. sides and top. I'm gonna give them a few coats. Just give them the first coat of like sanding. It's holding itself. Top pieces. Oh, that needs clearing up. Yeah, that fits comfortably, as does that. So, once I've cleaned that surface, it's going to go in there. Jamming a piece of scrap wood in here, just so that it doesn't tear through and damage the, uh, well, it just doesn't tear out. last piece in 20 mil gap at the back here same as the front same there same there so they all kind of these bars close on top of them grooves now put me uh, drill bits away I miscalculated earlier that there was eight, I needed eight slots along here for the countersink bits. Um, but it ended up leaving an extra groove, which was not an idea. The countersink, bin, sink, countersink bits come with an Allen key for adjusting the collars. So what I can do is... the Allen key. Oh, 
also a bit tight. There we go, job's a good one. 